Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack. My name is Jason. My call sign is KC5HWB. This is episode 660. So we made it to another um, another level, I guess. <laughs> my, my episode 50 was uh, the unboxing and testing of the ICOM IC7300, and that's that one's got a lot of hits. Not because my video is so great, but just because it's the IC7300. But this is episode 60, and this is going to be the debut of another radio. Actually, I don't have the radio yet, but this is going to be an interview with Bob Greenberg, uh, W2CYK, who is the administrator. He might be the author, founder, we'll find out here in a minute, of the RF Finder app. Um, so if you go into your Android or iPhone and you search your app store for uh, RF Finder, actually there's only one F in the middle there, so it's R Finder is how you spell it. And it's a repeater locating app that takes the GPS of your uh, smartphone and uh, it coordinates where your location is and it tells you what repeaters are in your area. And you can choose t uh, 10 meter repeaters up to 1.2 gigahertz repeaters. So before we get started here, I want to take a couple of minutes and um, give some props and some uh, gratitude to uh, Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Hey Gary, I saw your latest episode. Uh, thank you for the uh, promotion in the video. Uh, those of you who watch my series, uh, maybe you watch other... I'm certainly not the first video series on YouTube, but maybe you watch some of the other vid video serieses, serieses on YouTube uh, about amateur radio. And one of those that's done better than most, I should say, is Gary Pierce's show, show which he calls Ham Radio Now. And um, it's one of the first, well, it's not the first, the first one I ever watched was actually Ham Nation. Um, but Gary's was like the second or third one I ever watched. I, I keep up with Gary's show. I don't really keep up with Ham Nation anymore. Um, not really any reason why. Some of the stuff they talk about on there is just kind of out of, in another area of amateur radio that I, that, nothing wrong with it, of course. It's just not as interesting to me as some other areas. And the stuff that Gary talks about is usually kind of right up my alley, usually. Not, not you know, everybody's opinions vary kind of a little bit, and that's fine. I catch most episodes of AmateurLogic.TV, or I try to anyway. Um, they had a really good field day episode in 2016. I liked that. They, they set up a tent in a field and put an air conditioner, and put a window unit and air conditioner in it. That's how you do field day. <laughs> you set up a tent in a field with a window unit. That's, that's a great idea. I may have to try that. Anyway, uh, Gary Pierce... Um, KN4AQ has his series, Ham Radio Now, and on his episode that just released a few days ago, his episode 269, where he unboxes this radio, the Baofeng Tech UV5X3, which I've done an unboxing video of this radio, I just haven't aired it yet, um, been trying to juggle around my episodes and whatnot, so that will, my unboxing will air in the next week or two, something like that. Um... But Gary uh, did an unboxing of that uh, radio, that tri-band, the new tri-band from B-Tech. And in the front of that video, uh, he goes to my website and he looks at my um, Journey to Joplin video, my episode 58, I think it was. 59. 59. Episode 59. And uh, he says some stuff and very nice, very professional. And... Uh, very good, uh, good, good promo ad. So, Gary, thank you very much. Yes, um, I do get some inspiration from you because I like the way you do your series. But uh, I try to be, I try to put my own thing into it. I try to watch more than more series uh, on YouTube than just mine to try to get ideas. I listen to podcasts also. Some of the audio podcasts out there, I listen to 100 Watts and Wire, and I listen listen to Ham Radio 360, and. Um, I've caught a couple episodes of Linux in the Ham Shack. That kind of interests me also, because I'm sort of a Linux guy. But uh, but the videos are what I mostly care, uh, watch, and uh, and I've watched more of Gary's episodes than I have other episodes. So thanks, Gary, for the for the props. Yeah, I would um, welcome any comments that you have. Uh, you do a great job, and um, just keep up the good work out there. So um, thanks for. Thanks for the promotion. Uh, those of you who are interested, go check out Gary's series, Ham Radio Now, on YouTube. So, this episode, episode 60, 6 
is going to be about the RF Finder. I'm going to call it RF Finder until I... We might learn differently in this episode that it's called something else. So RF Finder, like I said a minute ago, um, takes the GPS from your smartphone, tells you where you are, and then you can go in there and um, set it for anywhere from 10 meters to 1.2 gigahertz repeaters, FM, D-Star, DMR, Fusion, P25, all these different filter options in there. You can find which repeaters are closest to you, uh, all the information about them. You can do updates if you know if you find some information that's wrong or you can't find a repeater that you know is there. You can add repeaters to the app, so it's a user-based interface app that is for repeater location. And they call themselves the Worldwide Repeater Network. So uh, they have um, repeater settings, repeater databases. I guess I should say all over the world. Well, um, they were the first. They were. What we're going to look at today, we're going to talk about with uh, with Bob, W2CYK, here in just a few minutes, is their new app, their new uh, device. It's a new device. It's an Android-powered HT. Okay? So, an Android-powered HT that um, runs on an Android OS. I don't know what, ver what uh, version of Android. We'll find that out here in a minute. It runs on an Android OS, and... It, um, it's a two-way radio. It's a phone also, but it's a two-way radio. So it's, a, it's an Android smartphone with a two-way radio built into it. And what it does, it has what they call point-and-click programming. So you download your RF Finder app from the Google Play App Store. You go in and you set it up and you let, it, let the GPS find your location. When you find a repeater you want to connect to, you click on it in the app and it loads it into the two-way radio built into the device and you key it up and you're on the air. And it'll do analog and DMR. So I saw a DMR and I'm like, right up my alley. Yeah. So I was really excited that it was a DMR radio and not a D Star radio. So, of course, I had to order one. And it has been ordered and it's on its way to me now. <laughs> yeah. Don't expect. Um, Expect some evil to be done with that thing. I'm just kidding. Well, no, I'm really not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Android smartphone with a DMR radio built in. You know, pretty much the only thing it needs is um, like a Wi-Fi connector to a keg pull. So you can pull your keg and pour a glass of beer straight from your Android phone. Somebody invents an app for that. That would be, well, you'd get rich overnight. So, if there's an idea. Tell, tell people you heard about it on Ham Radio 2.0. <laughs> anyway, I've ordered one. Uh, hopefully, it will be, uh, I don't know how long it'll be till it's here. The, uh, the shipping time on the order said 21 days because it is coming from China. Um, but I talked to, uh, to Bob Greenberg, uh, W2CYK, and he said, well, they just put that on there as a default in case it gets held up at customs or something. It shouldn't really take that long. So I expect to, I mean, you know, fingers crossed, maybe I'll have it next week. But expect another episode on Ham Radio 2.0 for that device once it's here, and I've had a chance to tinker with it and, um, use it, and, uh, we'll probably do some key up on my, my portable repeater that's here at the house and do some QSOs on the air. That'd be really cool. Anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I read about this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, two, three, four weeks ago, something like that. A friend of mine, Rob, W5RIR, RIR, Romeo, India, Romeo, W5RIR. Thank you, Rob, for sending me that email because I was not a member of that email list before that. I've signed up now, but I'd seen the ad on Facebook before you sent me that email, Rob. But so I was aware of it, but I wasn't aware of the countdown. So um, saw the count. It was a countdown till release. Well, they released it like four days early, because it wasn't supposed to be released until September 30th. And I think he actually put the web the sale site up to where you could go in there and click and order the device on the 26th. So he's ahead of schedule. You don't see that in the radio world like ever. Okay, ask TYT, ask Connect Systems, ask. Bailfang, ask, walks on. No one, any tone, 
any tone tri band mobile radio ask any of those guys you don't see things released early you don't see a projected release date and a release that is earlier than that date so you this is the first time i've ever seen it so so that was really cool to see not only was it released on time but it was released early um so i ordered one uh immediately i think i was order number four <laughs> i think my invoice says order number four and uh, like I said, it, it, when, when we get it in. So I emailed Bob and I said, hey, I introduced myself, told him who I was. I gave him a link to my, uh, my video series. Um, he acted, he didn't really say one way or the other, but he acted like he hadn't seen my video series before, which that's fine, no problem. He's seen it now. <laughs> and I said, Bob, would you do an interview for me? Would you like to be interviewed? I want you to come on my show and talk about this device. And he's like, yeah, of course I will. Why wouldn't he? And, in fact, when I talked to him on the phone a couple days later, um, he was like, you know, several people have asked me to do this, but nobody's followed up with me and set any schedule yet, so yours is probably going to be the first one. So, here it is. Episode 60. This is an interview between Bob Greenberg and myself. Bob is W2CYK. He is the creator, inventor, president, CEO, whatever you want to call it, of R Finder. R R F. I N D E R. So it's spelled R Finder for Repeater Finder, but the R F is capitalized, so it's like it's like a play on words. R F Finder, but there's only one F. So anyway, go download the app, check it out, uh, look at how robust it is. Um, we're gonna learn a few things about it in this interview, about its history and whatnot. And uh, special thanks to Bob for allowing me for taking the time out and allowing me to interview him on this show so uh, stick around let's uh, take a look at this word from our commercial sponsor and then we'll get right into it this is Jerry KG5 JBC and I'd like to invite you to join our DMR net on the Brandmeister Network talk group 3148 on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time this net is sponsored by the Ham Radio 2.0 video podcast on live from the ham shack TV. Okay, guys, this is Jason with uh, Ham Radio 2.0, and I am here with Bob Greenberg, W2CYK. Correct? That's I got your uh, got your call sign correct, right? Okay. And he's going to uh, he's going to tell us about the uh, now Bob. One question I did have is just the pronunciation, so I don't say it wrong because the app is actually named R R Finder, and I keep calling it R F Finder, but there's not two F's in it in there. So only one F. yeah. So what do you, what what am I supposed to call it? People make that error all the time. Yeah. So. So it, it it could be RF Finder, it could be R Finder for Repeater Finder. So what what what's it's, your? It was it was originally Repeater Finder. Okay. We were the first directory that existed. So uh, I was like, oh, what are you gonna call? It? I'll just call it Repeater Finder. Okay. And uh, you know, but um, so that's what it ended up being. And then the the, the back end is called the Worldwide Repeater Directory. Yeah. So the app okay. is called R Finder, and then the the, the, the uh, directory is called the Worldwide Repeated Directory. It was really two entities in the system. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call it R Finder then. That's that's how I, because sure. I thought it was R F Finder, but it's it's not really. So okay, nope. good deal. Okay. So give us a little bit dad, of history dad about. Still, my dad still says that. So. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's no problem. Um. So, but I'll call it R Finder. I just want to be grammatically correct for the video, if nothing else. So give us a little bit of history. Tell us about yourself, and then tell us um about history about R Finder, and then we'll get into the device after that. Sure, you bet. All right. Um. Well, I'm Bob W two C Y K. Hi, everybody. Um. I'm actually a third generation amateur radio operator. My uh, my call W two C Y K was my grandfather's uh, call, uh, and my son is a fourth generation ham. He's uh, cool. W two E E O. So uh, my dad's still alive, K two A C M. So mm -hmm. you know we come from a ham family. I was involved in amateur radio very young. I remember sitting on my grandfather's knee when he was pounding out Morse code with a straight key. Nice. So uh, you know uh, I've been exposed to radio all my life. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun for me. It's something I've always done, and uh, and I think I had about a six year lull after college. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I think that happens to a lot of people. But yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, I've been 
always always on the radio. So, uh, and then uh, what did you want to know about uh, R Finder? Yeah, the R Finder. How'd you come up with the? Uh, and you said you were the first, right? So most people have heard of Repeater Book, and while I, I have both installed on my phone right now, and I kind of use. Yeah, it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for, you know. So I click on this and use, uh, sometimes I use R-Finder, sometimes I use Repeater Book. But, um, you know, tell me how you came up with it. I, I assume if you were the first one, then I assume Repeater Book wasn't around back then. And um, Well, they started, like, right after us. Okay. It was almost like, that, almost like it might have been a month difference. Oh, know, really? Uh, you know, uh you know, uh, but we certainly uh, we were certainly like the first with an app for a very you know for a long time. It took mm -hmm. a long time to come out with an app for. It. But um, uh, what it was was years ago in the '90s. I was traveling around the world, and um, uh, I always had an HT with me, mm -hmm. and I worked for IBM, and I would travel all over, and uh, I'd always look for repeaters while I was out. So, you know, back then. Things were pretty crude. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you'd search around, and uh, sometimes you'd, you'd catch a squelch tail on the end and, uh, mm -hmm. and then try to figure out what the PL was, if there was one. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, uh, it was always very challenging. And it was it was fun to try. I mean, you know, right. I was pretty bored in, the, in my hotel room by myself. Right. And generally, the, uh, generally TV wasn't in English, so uh, I needed something to do. Mm. So, uh, and um, I actually made some QSOs back then, and it was a lot of fun. And I would have dinner with people in various countries, and you know, that I just met on the radio. And it was oh, uh, nice. it was really a cool way of like of meeting people. Yeah. And uh, and and, um, and uh, so I guess about five years ago, six years ago, we were about to start a project and. A uh, project got pushed off. A programming house. We, we write software for. We've, been, we've written software for healthcare for years. Okay. Um, uh, like custom. Usually, like stuff that people don't interact with, uh, like passing data back and forth between yeah. systems and stuff, yeah. like you know uh, interfaces. Mm -hmm. So I said to my programmer, you know, you're not going to drool on yourself while we while we figure out, you know, how to get this this project going. Mm -hmm. I want you to download. Android development kit and figure out how to write an app. Mm -hmm. And a week from now, I will have it. I'll just write anything. Mm -hmm. it's stupid as it, you can just say hello world. I don't care. I just yeah. want to see that you created a uh, an app. An app. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And a week later, I came to him with a design. I was like, you know what? Let's just do a repeater directory. It doesn't exist. Mm. And um, and uh, you know, of course, uh, I had always had a paper repeater directory for years, you know. Yeah. And I never liked the way it was laid out. I felt that it was, uh, well, well, you know, the, the repeater, um, uh, the other repeater directory that you mentioned mm -hmm. was laid out like the repeater book, you know, yeah. because that's where they got the data from originally. Right. So, right. Uh, so uh, uh, one of the um, uh, things that I decided early on was that we were going to make this purely based on geolocation. We were going to mm -hmm. make sure that all of the repeater data uh, was going to have uh, you know GPS positioning. Yeah. So that we could e exploit converged devices like Android mm -hmm. and iPhones and stuff like that. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn the volume down on my phone so that you don't hear the... Okay. Oh, wait a minute. And then I can't hear you. Oh, <laughs> you can't hear me now. <laughs> okay. So, so let me ask a question with what you just said. So there is an i. I don't have an iPhone. I I don't I don't particularly care for iPhones, but that's just me. But there is an iPhone app for R Finder as well. I assume. Oh, sure. Okay. Yep. What about the Windows phones? There's not very many of them out there, but some people have them. Anything for a Windows phone? Well, you know, we had actually developed a Windows Seven phone version, uh -huh. and just as we were at we had finished it, and then um, Microsoft was being very, very difficult, very yeah. difficult about yeah. approving apps to go on to their store. Yeah, they were being very difficult, and uh, and um, you know we'd think that we'd have a good configuration, and we'd resubmit it, and then they'd create another moving target for oh. us. Oh, <laughs> why they didn't want? It. it sounds right. Why they, you know, you know what we had to do next to make make it compliant instead of just telling us, okay, we want you to do this, 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 and this. Right. And be done with. It. 
Right. So, yeah. you know, the truth is, we would have had one out a long time ago if Microsoft hadn't been so difficult. And we put right. so much time into it. Yeah. And finally, uh, you know, then they moved on to uh, Windows 8, and I just threw my hands up and said, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you there. Okay. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, so I, I, I just had it with, you know, right. Because yeah, Android is, 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 for the most part, is backwards compatible. Right. You know. Right. You know what I mean? If yeah. you make the app today, it'll work on the forward devices, on the backward devices. Right. Everything's fine. Yeah. Same with iOS. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Right now, we won't run on anything below below iOS seven. Okay. But uh, we haven't e even gotten one complaint about that. So. Okay. So I'm, so I'm okay. So, okay, great. You know, um, uh, Android, I think we won't run below version 2. So, Who has that anymore? Yeah. Sheesh. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, people t tend to want to have the latest versions of their operating yeah. systems. And, yeah. You know, so it, it doesn't end up being a problem. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Okay. Uh, All right. So you were going. You were saying about uh, you told your developer guy to write an app that does anything, and then you said let's make a repeater app, and then based on geolocation, GPS. I think that's kind of where you. Right. Hit directory. Yeah. I, yeah. I decided it was going to be GPS. You know, like geolocation enabled. Yep. So um, I uh, um, I created a database of half a dozen countries or so. And, okay. Uh, and gave him a design, an initial design, and a week later he came back to me and said, "Is this what you were, you know, had in mind?" And I looked at, it, I was like, "Yeah, that's exactly what I had in mind." <laughs> but change these three things, and he changed the three things, right. and I was like, "Okay, this is really usable." Yeah. And I stuck it out on on the Android market at the time. It wasn't Google Play yet. No. And uh, uh, people started downloading it. Good. Yep. And then yeah. I looked at it, and I was like, you know what? We should really turn this into a. Uh, you know, make it sustainable, right? You know, make, mm -hmm. Turn it into a real business model and like make it sustainable so that um, yeah. so that uh, you know uh, so that it can like live for a long time. Right. Right. You know, sure. So. Okay. Great. Okay. So so that works well. I downloaded. I'm still on the free trial version because I um I downloaded it like three weeks ago when I when I first I, I saw a, a post on Facebook I think it was about the new device that we're about to talk about and I went out and, and found that on uh, on the Google Play Store and I downloaded it and I've been tinkering and I've I've pretty much used it exclusively since then so I'm gonna I'm gonna register for it and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, sign up and get the get the full uh, package version because I really like the way it works um, so yeah yeah I, I like what I've seen so far um, I'm really proud of the app like the the app is really there's nothing even close like from a from a feature perspective mm -hmm. um you know and, and i'm not going to say that anything's bad but right like, there's nothing that has the the, the the amount of features that we have we really you know you know uh being a business we've been able mm -hmm. to you know invest you know back into it so much right and, uh, and really push it forward and you know and figure out ways of making a you know putting in social features right putting in you know, but you know, uh, jamming reports, being in, you know, yeah. uh, APRS, you know, to be able to, to check into a machine and tell everybody around you, and you know that you're checked into this machine. See, that's cool. Machine. Yeah, as well as on Facebook and Twitter and crap like that. There you go. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great idea. I've, I thought about something like that a while back, saying, hey, I just checked into this repeater, you know, blah blah, or I just checked into this HF net on seven two dot eight eight five or something like that. So, uh, you know, anyway, 7.285, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so, okay, so there's the app. So tell us about the, um, your, um, the only thing I know to call it is an R-Finder Android HT. That's really the only name I've seen for it. So I know you've got one um, that you can sh show us. Um, so tell us, tell us how that came about and tell us some of the features of it. Yeah, we call it R-Finder Android Radio, and... Um the, the way it came about was, um, uh, you know, we're, we're partners with, uh, with you know, a dozen radio societies mm -hmm. around the world, including um, Deutsche Amateur Radio Club in Germany. And uh, one of the executives in, uh, in DARK, uh, DF200, um, mentioned to me that he uses DMR. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with DMR is that if you program your radio and you go somewhere else... Your radio is a brick. You can't do anything right. with the radio. Right. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and 
and he said to me, you know, I really <clears throat> wish he could come up with something. Yeah. That would uh, that would be useful yeah. for DMR because DMR is growing very rapidly. Oh yeah. In fact, we've seen in our database that yeah. DMR was growing faster really than any, any other digital mode. Like yes. Much faster. Yes. Not like a little faster. <clears throat> a little plug here of, of my. Now I've been doing this series. This this uh, this episode that we're recording right now will be episode number sixty for me. Um, I've been doing this series for about a year and a half and. The majority of my episodes are on some sort of DMR. Well, a, a good chunk of my episodes are on some sort of DMR. I've been in the DMR for about three years. I've given presentations at some local ham fests about DMR. I've, I've listened to presentations at like Dayton and some of the bigger ham fests and learned quite a bit myself. So I'm pretty heavy in the DMR. I've used Fusion. I've not used D-Star. Um, I'm going to try to start to use D-Star because I'm just, just kind of curious about it. But I've used Fusion a little bit, but I really, really like DMR. I, I, I like the format. I like the, the features of it. But like what you said is absolutely true. If you don't have the forethought to think, I need to build a code plug for this country, this state I'm about to go to, then your, your radio is a brick if you take it with you. You can't program it on the fly. So so speak DMR to me all you want to because I'm, I'm very familiar with DMR. So go ahead. Okay. So then we started looking at it, like, okay, well, how do we generate a code plug? And we mm -hmm. found out that it was almost impossible for us to generate a code plug. We wanted to create out of the web interface mm -hmm. to say, okay, for instance, do you know about the routing feature on the web? Yes. Okay, so in other words, you can say, you know, uh, I, mean, I happen to be, uh, you guys don't know this, but I'm at the, uh, the United Kingdom... Uh, <laughs> Amateur radio convention for RSGB right now. Right, I'm in uh, I'm in Nottingham. So Nottingham, <laughs> Robin Hood. Say I'll hi say to Robin Hood. To, uh, <laughs> I'll say hi to uh, Robin Hood. For, uh, right, uh, you know, right. You know, but um, uh, you know, let's say I said um, I want to go from um, from uh, Nottingham to Southampton, England, mm -hmm. and show me all the uh, DMR machines along the way. Mm -hmm. Our finder on the web will do that. It'll show you all okay. the machines along the way. You can say, well, show me anything 15 miles, 20 miles off the road, whatever you want. You, okay, so you plot your course basically like Google Maps or something. Exactly. Right. It uses Google okay. Maps on the back end to do Perfect. that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, and it'll find the machines anywhere in the world. You know, That's literally. Great. I mean, like we've done routes from Oslo, Norway to Azerbaijan. That's great. That's great. Okay. Find you all the machines along. Well, hold on to from Mexico City to uh, you can't find the machines from Mexico City to Medellin, Colombia because Google Maps won't let you uh, uh, pass from drive from Panama to uh, to Medellin apparently. So huh. okay, probably some. There's like a mount, there's a mountain range there, and apparently it must be too dangerous or something oh. to drive through there or something. Okay. Oh, they also won't let you drive from uh, Lebanon to Israel, so if you try to. <laughs> Route from like you know from For, uh, um, Istanbul to Tel Aviv. You can't do that either. But probably obvious reasons there. So, but other than yeah. that, other okay. than that, it, it'll route pretty much anywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Pretty, nice. Yep. Okay. Okay. But yeah. So you know, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. So I wanted to take that and say, okay, well, let's create a code. Let's let's have a download option to create a code plug from that. Right. And we couldn't, we couldn't do it. You can download the data set and then import it into what are your, whatever your favorite programming software is for your DMR radio. Mm -hmm. That works fine. But to actually generate the code plug was nearly impossible. Hmm. It was really impossible. Mm -hmm. So I started looking around and said, you know, for, for other options. Mm -hmm. And I found in Asia, I found this, this handy dandy device here. Let me get the screen up. That's for it. You. This handy dandy device, mm -hmm. you guys can see it. and from a company called Runbo, right. that makes um, that makes these Android based. It's actually a cell phone, a GSM right. cell phone with 4G LTE, a fully converged device, you know, GPS chip, of course. But it also has a module in it to be a uh, 400, 400 megahertz DMR radio. Right. So after pleading with them for over a month to, mm -hmm. to uh, get the application programming interface and let us program this thing. Because mm -hmm. it would, I mean, like, I was crazy. Like, <laughs> why would you want to do that? Yeah. I sent the video after video after video, and I kept texting with them on Skype, and finally they said, okay, yeah, that actually looks like a good idea. Yeah, okay. Um, 
and they sent me the, uh, the you know the internals uh, a code on this thing to, mm -hmm. to let me make the modifications to it. Good. So uh, so we did, and now we have a uh, you know we have this Android based HT. Yep. You can see R Finder is running on it. Yep. And you can literally choose a machine. I don't know if you can see this green button here. Press the green button and it changes the frequency on the radio. Yeah. So, because... Uh, but there was another problem, because DMR has all these call... You know, has, has the talk groups. Right. And uh, the time slice... Time, time slot talk groups, and they may differ between repeaters, even though they're the same same talk groups between a group of repeaters, but some of them may have it one talk group on time slot one, and others may have it on time slot two. Right. So we talked to DMR, the, the folks at DMR Mark back mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Dayton, and I okay. said to them, look, I got something in mind. You know, we, we want to create, you know, we want to do something, create, right. t you know, code plugs or, or downloads at least, and I need to have the, the talk groups in a structured way in your database mm -hmm. so that we can pull it out and make it, you know, and do something with it. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't known at that point that I was going to find the device, find this device. Oh. I didn't know yet. Right. But it was one of those forward-thinking things that you come up with, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have an epiphany, you find, <laughs> like, something else, and you figure out, oh, jeepers, well, we can just kind of change everything now. Right, You know. right, right. That's really how I look at it. I, I, mean, I, I you know, I call it a revolution, a, a DMR, because you no longer have to worry about code plugs, cables, laptops, software, nothing. Right. right. You just have this converged device, and anywhere you go in the world, and like I said, right now I'm in Nottingham, England. Right. And I don't know if you can see, but the second unit down here is a DMR radio. Oops. I like that. The screen. It's kind of fuzzy on the screen, but I mean, I can see what you're pointing at. Sure. So the second one down is a, uh, in fact, is a uh, DMR radio. Now this yep. one only has one talk group on it. It's one okay. one, you know, uh, talk group one, um, time slice one. Okay. This particular one, and if I if I, um, and this one we actually got the data from UK repeaters. Okay. Now this machine may very well be a Brandmeister unit because oh, uh, yeah because we didn't get it from DMR because we load DMR. Okay. Um, we're okay. actually talking with Rudy at uh, Brandmeister, and we're sure. this close um, to uh, bringing Brandmeister in. Brandmeister is kind of an interesting animal because apparently yeah. they just suggest a time slice. But you, all you need to know is like all the talk groups in Brandmeister, and it doesn't have to be configured specifically on the machine. No. So, so if there's like a, a talk, uh, you know. A, 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 a talk group 301 mm -hmm. in Brandmeister, you can actually connect to it from any node, from any machine that, you, that, that, that you're on. Yeah. You got it actually programmed into the machine. Well, that is, is a very cool thing, but if you don't program a radio to do that, yeah. you know, CS7000 or, yeah. or iTerra, whatever, if you don't program the radio to do it, then you just can't do it. Right. You know, it's not, yeah. You know. Right. So you know, it's now ad hoc. You know, yeah. now I can just do that. And okay. in fact, it's even had ad hoc to the point of where we've created a control panel. Oh. Yeah, I just want to make sure this is on DMR mode. Um, yeah, now it is, okay? And yep. I don't know if you can see this, but you have the ability to change the color code, the time yep. slice. It says group ID, oh, yeah, huh? group ID and huh? time slot. Okay. Okay. So, if, if, you know, if you if, if, uh, if you want to do it on the fly manually because it's just not, you know, let's say there's a machine that for some reason hasn't made it into our database yet. Right. Okay. You know you're in the vicinity of it. You know a talk group you want to use. Okay. You just like plunk it in. And okay. See, that was okay. Good. That that you answered my question before I asked it because DMR Mark. Their website is notorious, at least in the United States. Their website is notoriously outdated. Um, the information on their repeaters tab, if you if you go to the repeaters tab from dmrmark.net and you pull up the map of the United States and you drill down to the state you're in and click on the repeater, it has a list of talk groups and time slot assignments on that repeater, which may or may not be correct. And it may or, may or may not be complete. There may be two or three talk groups that aren't even listed there at all that are accessible to the repeater. 
So uh, unless unless the repeater trustee goes and updates that, then DMR Mark hasn't been good about keeping that updated. So with what you just showed me, is that your plan to, to overcome that obstacle? That's correct. Okay. Now, Brandmeister actually fixes yeah. that problem. Because Brandmeister says, well, within within the network, we're going to support all these talk groups. And, right. Uh, and it doesn't matter what time slice you're on to uh -huh. get to it. Right. It just doesn't matter. You right. Know, they give a, a suggested time slice, but you can get to it from either one, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's true in DMR Mark also. I mean, you can get to talk group... Talk group number three is North America, and you can get through that th through time slot one or two. It just matters of what your C bridge and repeater are set up to pass traffic through. But I see what you're right. saying. Okay, I see what you're saying though. So go ahead. Yeah, you don't. Know, it doesn't matter on on BM. Like there's no mm -hmm. there's no uh, the, 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 the infrastructure behind it doesn't matter either. Right. It just, right. It just works. Right? right. So, and I'm not being disparaging to anything, believe me. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, remember that, that technology is technology is evolutionary. Right. And, and sometimes people come up with an idea that in some situations than others, you know, so. Right. Um, so, you know, so we've made it uh, with Brandmeister. We've actually just finished this yesterday. Oh, wow. The ability to pull their entire database of talk groups from their system and their on the back end part of our finder in the in the worldwide repeater directory engine. Okay. Um, shortly, we're going to have the repeaters now brought down from Brandmeister. Okay. You'll see like a new kind of mode. Like right now, it says DMR slash Turbo. Those will become DMR slash Mark. Yeah. And then there'll be DMR slash Brand. Okay. And then DMR slash Plus. Slash Plus. Yeah. So you'll see them in the list appropriately as as to you know what their source is because okay. we update those every day. Like okay. Those we're we're going to be updating every day. Okay. As well okay. As, the, as well as the talk groups from Brand, right? So right. So when you click on a repeater to, to, and click on the program button, mm -hmm. you'll be presented with a list of categories. You choose a category, and then it'll show you a list of because there's like three hundred of them. And it's kind of right. Tough to just throw a list <laughs> yeah. of three hundred. <laughs> yeah. That category. Yeah, they got a lot of them. Cascading menu that you say, okay, well. Show me North America. Uh -huh. you, know, and then, you know, then you'll see all the, you know, all the call groups for North America. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you know, so that that's that's where we're that's where we're moving with this for Brandmeister, and we hope okay. to have Brandmeister implemented in the next few weeks. Okay. We're excited. We're very excited. To yeah. Have that. No, and there's a lot of there's a lot of activity on Brandmeister. I've been talking to those guys. We got a really active group here in Texas. Uh, they run a net every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and um, talk. Uh, a lot of people buying into that. Now, w when you're doing when you're doing Brandmeister, a lot of those folks aren't even on repeaters, they're on hotspots. Uh, DV4 Mini, DV Megas, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. is there, besides just going in and manually setting it, I suppose, is there an option, since the phone itself, since your Android device has a, a 4G LTE connection, will there be possibly, or maybe you're already working on this, a, a future option for to like make the phone into both a hotspot to where you don't even need a repeater to get into Brandmeister from the RF Finder device? Well, I haven't gone there yet because we've been okay. really busy in just getting this up and running. Right, okay. And literally, like, this has been, like, you know, once I had an engineering sample of this radio and... Mm -hmm. Like literally, it's been weeks, you know, yeah. of just heads down, uh, yeah. getting this thing up. I, mean, yeah. I the, haven't even had a chance to look at the DV4 minis and okay. stuff. Okay. You know, but, okay. um, you know, I, I know that those things have an antenna on them, right? Yes. I mean, I've only seen pictures of them. I never actually like, touched one. The, but the DV Mega has an antenna on it, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that that's a radio at, uh, entry point, I think. Right. Correct. Yeah. So you just set what you know whatever frequency and color code and, mm -hmm. you know whatever you can set on that radio, and then of course you can put it into the uh, into the R Finder Android radio right. and mm -hmm. okay okay and use so, that as your entry point certainly that's an option yeah. okay I mean Great. You're basically using your DV4 Mini as I understand it as a uh, as a machine right? right correct yeah I mean it takes a place of a repeater if you don't have a repeater local to you. 
Or what I've done several times is if I get on road trips, I'm driving to Ham Fest. I'm driving four, five, six hours to a Ham Fest. I put, I connect up my my DV4 Mega and my Blue Stack, which connect to my smartphone via Bluetooth and use my 4G connection from my smartphone. And that's my internet connection. The DV Mega is my repeater. It's my hotspot repeater. And then I have my, my radio in my truck. So I'm talking into the hotspot, into my yep. cell phone while I'm driving down the road. And I'm holding the same conversation with the same people on a six-hour drive down the highway across three states. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. I, I spoke to another guy today in the, who literally has a DMR machine in his trunk. I, I've, a I've met a couple of guys like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. He has a DMR repeater in his trunk. Right. And apparently, everywhere he drives in the country, he's just like, yeah. he's got a hot spot in his car. Uh-huh. And uh, literally, I guess, I guess he's got this repeater on the internet through the hot spot. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He's just Cra- in anywhere. Craziness. So kind of cool. <laughs> Crazy well, is right. Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. I've got it. I've got a portable repeater that I take around with me to Hamfest. That's connected to a DMR Mark C bridge. Um, but uh, but I, when I'm driving, I don't have it hooked up to the truck. When driving, I, when I'm driving, I'm on my hotspot connected into Brandmeister. So uh, you know what I like to the truck? What? Twenty meter and eighty meter uh, yeah. mobile. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I said in one of my last videos I need to become a real ham radio operator and actually put HF in my truck. So instead of talking on DMR the whole time, but uh, that's that's Bar-Hill down Bar-Hill the road. Antennas, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. Uh, okay. So at the time of this recording, I mean, your website just yeah, we've seen an advertisement for the last few weeks, but your website for sale just went live. Like what? Three days ago, wasn't it? Three, four days ago, something like that. Yeah, and it was earlier than anticipated. You you actually ran ahead of schedule, unlike most people releasing something run behind schedule. Yeah, I um, said the thirtieth, but we opened up on Monday, which I think was the twenty Monday at five o'clock. What was that date? I don't know. Yeah, I 20, think we we're about three or four days early. Yeah. Or something. Okay. So, and I've already ordered one, so I'll be doing. Uh, so I once this video posts, hopefully. In the next few days, this, this, I'm going to try to post this video this weekend, and then once I get my device in the mail, I'll do another video on that because I'm going to be playing with that thing quite a bit once I once I get it. So I'm looking really forward to that. I think there's like one left. Oh really? Okay, okay, that figures. That figures. That's true. Okay, great. Well, uh, what uh, what version of Android does it run right now? Right now, it's got four four one on it. Okay. Okay. It's pretty respect. It's a pretty respectable version. That's it. Yeah, that's a pretty a solid people, one. A lot of people. Yeah, it's a solid. A lot of yeah. people have asked me, "Is it going to be updated?" I don't know if it will be or not. Quite okay. frankly, I mean, you know, um, uh, there'll probably be another ver- another piece of hardware before it, it even makes right. sense. To, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Because we're already looking at um, at new form factors. And, yeah. You know, I'm actually. Yeah. Working with the with the Runbow people, I'm going to visit them at the end of October. Awesome. We're uh, okay. we're trying to design a, a dual band unit. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That would yep. be cool. A dual band, a dual band unit. Mm-hmm. There's another unit coming out that is going to be about the size of a uh, Galaxy a Galaxy Note with okay. a uh, OtterBox on it. Yep. Okay. A little bit a little bit thicker, 4500 milliamp mm-hmm. hour battery. Yep. Yep. They actually just disclosed that to me yesterday. That form factor. Um, there'll be a uh, there'll be a tablet, a seven inch tablet model that actually will have a, uh, a you know GSM cell phone for uh-huh. LTE and a uh, radio module of your choice in it. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen them advertise that. Um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't exist. It's yeah. paperware right. Now. Okay, I actually had a Runbow phone. I I had I only had it for like a month or two. It worked great. I didn't have any problems with it. It was a 440 analog only radio. Um, it was really bulky. It was the size. The screen was the size of a Samsung Galaxy S3 or S4, and um, with it's IP67 rated. So you know you could throw the thing across the room and it wouldn't damage it. But it but the the otter box type case on it was really thick and really bulky and really heavy, and that was the only thing I didn't like about it. It wasn't that easy to carry, but it worked great. I just I didn't keep it because what? 
I was saying that, that that's actually a good thing that it was it, it, these things are built like you know yeah uh, I, I brick you know what I mean they're, they're they're built like very 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 sturdy. very sturdy yeah yeah they're very very durable I, I devices see, for sure you use it as a hockey puck and it will survive <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure <laughs> okay all right uh, Bob well wow I'm I'm looking forward to getting mine in the mail. Um, I know some people have been talking about it, and like you said, you didn't do much advertising when you when you first put the site live. Have you? Have you? Um, what's the URL? I mean, is there an easy way to get to the store URL, or is, is what's your yeah, what's your AndroidDMR.com? Android okay, AndroidDMR.com. Okay, and I'll put that in. And, and honestly, like I think there's one unit left on there. I mean, okay. we have we have uh, we had third. 40, we had 40 units all together, and it was mixed across uh, two meter Android, a uh, two meter uh, analog, mm -hmm. 440 with uh, the standard screen, and 440 with the hardened screen. Okay. And within 46 hours, we were down to one unit. <laughs> <laughs> Word travels fast, I guess, right? I just so, can't even imagine. Yeah. And all, uh, uh, honestly, I did. I hardly. I didn't even do anything. I put the website up. Yeah. Within a, within an hour of the website going up, there was four units already yeah. out the door. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Uh, you know, it's really been quite a thing, and people are excited about it. And I think. Yeah. Uh, I think we've struck a nerve. You know, people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I was sitting with an ICOM uh, uh, VP of sales in, in Europe a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago in Spain, mm -hmm. and he looked at it. And I could just see in his face that he was. <laughs> Why didn't we do this, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, what he was thinking, but I could see in his face that there was. So, by the way, we're working on on um, adding D Star to it. Oh, okay. So we okay. actually have a couple of different people that are interested in helping us um, get D Star running on it. Yeah. Okay. As well as uh, uh, somebody else mentioned, like helping us put P twenty five and N X D N, and everybody's yeah. so excited about this thing. Right. People, you know, because we have the data already. So imagine having a right. converged radio. Right. It has a database of old machines with all different modes in the world. Yeah. That you can just say, okay, I want to be on this machine, and hit the button, and you know, and it knows where you are in the world. So right. It knows what machines are, you know. Right. I think it's really revolutionary. It's pretty, yeah, and yeah. From all indications that I've had from other people saying stuff, it's yeah. Know, I mean, I've had some some naysayers too. You know, yeah. you know I was yeah. reading some stuff on the CS seven thousand uh, Yahoo group yesterday. Yeah, and yeah. There was there were some people that uh, that that were not so sure about it, but yeah. You know, there's always going to be somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. People are resistant to change. But, uh, you know, I've been saying for years that they should make an Android-based HT. I mean, what? why not? Why wouldn't you? Everything's Android-based these days. Well, right, Android or iPhone this? or whatever, but yeah. How about this? You ready for this? Okay. Have you seen on, on uh, eBay the, uh, um, the Android-based car stereos that you can buy? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you sitting down? <laughs> yeah. All right. Just imagine a two you a, a, a double din Android car stereo. Yep. With two meter four two meter four forty digital in it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twenty five fifty watts or whatever. Right. I'm working on prototyping that right now. There I'm you go. Try and talk them into manufacturing it. There you go. I so, actually I I, I you know so imagine yeah you know I mean. Look at that car is where do I put my rig? So imagine being right. able to pull your factory stereo out and uh -huh. stick in this, you know, this Android-based car stereo in it right. with with the with the two every meter 440 two meter four forty in it. <laughs> I actually bought an Android-based double din car stereo for my truck uh, about a month ago. It's I haven't installed it yet. It's sitting in the house right now. But the reason I did that is that so I could hotspot it to my uh, 4G device and use Google Maps on it or use uh, APRS Droid on it or use um, a couple of the Brandmeister um, Connectoid apps that are available for Android, something like that. Um, but that is cool. I, and I thought, in, in the back of my head, I thought, 
It'd be cool if there was a radio built into this thing. So you're already you're already ahead of me on that. <laughs> that's that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I think, I think you can probably tell from the directory in general that like we've been very forward thinking. Like, what can you do with a repeater directory? Right. And we've you know we've thrown some things against the wall, and some people use it, and some people don't. But uh, you know, but uh, you know, we're uh, always thinking about well, how are we going to uh, how are we going to make the repeated directory better? How are we going to make right. it do new things? How are we going to make it, you know, you know? So, you know, I just think that this converged radio really is the, really is the, you know, it's really the ticket. You know? Yeah. Especially if we, can, once we can get the other, the, the other, the other digital modes into it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think it's going to be a really exciting device. Really ex it's exciting in its own it's right, right yeah. now with FM Absolutely. And DMR, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right, Bob. Well, I know it's getting late where you're at. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for uh, talking to us today. Thanks for allowing me to, to put this on the air. I'll shoot you a uh, I'll shoot you an email when uh, when it's up and live. I got to do some editing to it, but that won't take very long. And um, yeah, all mine, and I really appreciate. Oh yeah. For, uh, for your support, and uh, just say thank you to all of our users. You know, for your support, because without you, we, you know, we wouldn't have been able to, to do everything that we have with this. And, right. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, it's exciting that the you know the that all the you know the twelve uh, actually soon to be thirteen um, uh, uh, radio societies in the world have made us their uh, their official repeater director. Official, yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, that's just that's just been really exciting, especially you know recently uh, back in February with the league. Yeah, being you know in our you know that you know we're Americans and uh, you know have done this and it's kind of neat that we were recognized by the league and mm -hmm. you know that's been a big that's been a you know a, a, a really big thing for us. So sure. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for uh, supporting us. And, yeah. Uh, Sounds good. Well, you've got some really great ideas, and I hope they come to fr the, I hope like like this one that's already come to fruition. I hope uh, I hope the rest of them do too. So I wish you all the best luck. Thank you very much for appearing on the show today. You bet. Thank you. Peace, yep. everybody. <laughs> Make America great again. <laughs> there you go. All right. Special thanks to Bob W two C Y K for uh, taking the time out to do this interview. Um, this was a first for me. I've never done an inter I've never done a Skype interview over um on this show before um so bob's <laughs> bob's actually in as he said he's in uh, nottingham england wherever in the world that is i mean obviously it's uh not close <laughs> he's out there for the english uh, ham festival um so and uh, or the uk 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 ham festival but um uh, that was so he took time out he was at his hotel room during that interview and um, very graciously agreed to be interviewed so you might see some little blips and stuff in the video that we just saw um, I still got to edit it put it all together um, after I finish recording this segment but um, hopefully it came out good I, I've got a dual audio feed so I know I got the audio real good hopefully the video part is, is legible um, kind of learning as I go on the on the interview process, but uh, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Your app uh, works really well. Your device looks really awesome. Can't wait to get mine in the mail. Uh, for links to everything that we talked about today, visit my website live at the Ham Shack. Live from <laughs> I don't even know my own website. Live from the Ham Shack TV. Look for episode sixty on the blog post, and there'll be several links down there linking you to the R Finder app the device, and a couple other things where we get to see really cool stuff about Brandmeister like he was talking about also for you Brandmeister folks out there. I know you guys will probably be salivating over that one. So uh, remember you heard about it here first on Ham Radio 2.0. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, those of you who are interested in supporting my series, uh, go hit up my website livefromthehamshack.tv uh, Click on the PayPal link over on the right hand side and um, Appreciate any support you might give. 73, guys, and we will catch you, you uh, next time. This is KC5HWB. I'll be QRT.